Hello, uh, my name's Daniel Emlyn Jones, and I'm here with my gimpy gimpies behind me in their cage. And, and the reason I'm doing this video is there's been a lot of media attention about the gimpy gimpies and about me. So I'd like to do a video to reflect a bit more on this issue about the media coverage and a bit more, give a few more details about cultivating um, the gimpy gimpy and a bit more um, background. I'm not, I'm not much of a YouTuber, so there's no music, there's no kind of special effects, I'm afraid you just got me. Um, so initially I wrote to the Oxford Times, our local paper in Oxford, about this. I thought it'd be an interesting sort of quirky story. And my hope really is, um, you know, our environment is in a terrible state, you know, natural environment is breaking down, um, species are going extinct at an unprecedented rate, you know, billions of people are going to suffer and die as a result of the environmental catastrophe we are in, the Anthropocene extinction. That's not exaggeration. So my hope was that this story would um, generate an interest in plants and maybe a respect for plants. Because actually, Gimpy Gimpy, Dendrocnide moroides, is a plant you have to respect. You have no choice but to respect it. Because um, if you don't respect it, um, it will win. You won't. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I don't particularly like the media, but I thought, well, I'll, I'll write in this story. It might be interesting, you know. So um, I was quite surprised. Um, a lot of the media articles I look in say, I grew this because I was bored, out of boredom at home. No, 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 I'm not bored. I work incredibly hard, like everybody else or most people. I have to earn money. I have a job. I'm very, very busy. So I am not doing this out of boredom. One article even said, I don't know where this came from, um, I'm doing it out of chronic ennui. Some reporters sort of um, practicing their vocab or something. No, I don't have chronic ennui. I'm too busy to indulge in chronic ennui. I'm doing this um, because I have a passion for exotic plants and unusual plants. And what I said to Ed Cullinane from Southwest News Service was, I am bored with, crucial word, bored with geraniums. You know, geraniums are lovely, but they do get a bit boring, some of them. An ordinary plant. So the crucial word is bored with certain plants. And I said that to Ed Cullinane from Southwest News Service. I don't know whether it was he who misquoted me or someone someone, someone down the, la the line, but they turned that into he's bored. And I think you'd all agree that is a misquote. There's a difference between being bored and being bored with something. So you understand. Anyway, I'm not going to rant for this whole video. You'll be glad to hear. So, um, and of course, not all reporters are nincompoops and bottom feeders. Um, I've come into contact with some wonderful, wonderful reporters and journalists. A News Talk Island radio I was on, BBC Wales, BBC Northampton, of course, BBC Oxford radio in our own, my own city, Oxford, wonderful. The Oxford Mail coverage was also very good. But I did resent articles saying, oh, look, he's bored and he's going to gimpy gimpy. So anyway, enough of that. Right. So what did I do? Well, um, I bought seeds. Um, and you can buy seeds. You can buy seeds. There are companies. I bought it from a company in Australia. Um, what was it called? Herbalistics. I bought it from a company in Australia called Herbalistics. They offer the Gimpy Gimpy seeds. But there are various companies that offer the Gimpy Gimpy seeds. So you can buy them. You have to be a bit careful because actually a lot of companies, most seed companies offer international postage and say, look, you can buy it international postage. But if you look in the terms and conditions, you'll see actually it's up to the importer to arrange a phytosanitary certificate. So you have to ask them um, for a phytosanitary certificate. Phytosanitary certificates are to do with um, plant diseases. So obviously for things like potato seeds or fruit seeds, crop seeds, this is very, very important. And Gimpy Gimpy, I should think would be low, low risk, but nevertheless, um, it's important, that is, that is the rule. So it's important to do that and check it, check it before you buy anything on the internet, check it because since Brexit, all the rules have changed as well. So it's all a bit um, complicated sometimes, but it's good just to get that right, I think. So, I mean, it's perfectly legal to grow them. You don't require a scientific license. So it's perfectly okay for a member of the general public to, to grow the Gimpy Gimpy. I planted mine in um, compost for carnivorous plants. Um, which is low in kind of nitrates. 
And they seem to have been a little pretty good, don't they? I'll show you a closer, closer look in a minute, but they're green and happy. You know, if they showed any signs of being grumpy, you know, going yellow, I'd probably add some, I'd give them some um, nutrient feed or something just in case. But they seem perfectly happy in the compost really for carnivorous plants that's low in um, nutrients. Um, temperature, well, it's about 18 degrees in here. Um, I did plant the seeds in the spring and they took a while to germinate. So they took, um, I think, several weeks, three weeks to germinate. And a friend of mine looked after them over the over the summer I was away. When I got back, they were much bigger. So I think they liked the hot summer we had in, in Oxford or in the UK. Um, but they've been fine. They're fine at that temperature. So, you know, they might grow more slowly at lower temperatures, but um, they don't really need, you know, hot house conditions. Humidity... Well, I knew someone who grew a gimpy gimpy that was a bit of a drama queen when it came to humidity. You sort of watered it and it rotted. So it was very unhappy. With mine, I gave them water as seeds and they seemed to be happy with that. So I just watered them. When, when they dry out, I, I water them in their dish. So I think maybe when you grow them, the, the advantage of growing from seed is just um, give them the conditions you're going to grow them in long term. And maybe they get used to it. And there, are no, there are no kind of hissy fits. Um, these are grown for a whole year now, so they're doing very well. Now, obviously, safety is the issue with Gimpy Gimpy, because it's um, known as the most dangerous plant in the world, and it does impart a horrible sting if you get stung. It's not very nice at all. I was repotting them. Um, when I was repotting them, um, I was wearing gloves um, with a material back. I now, I, I now have heavy-duty elbow-length gloves, but I had gloves with a material back, and I felt it was a bit of a sting. And I applied, I went through the whole first aid procedure and it was just a slight sting really, it was fine. It wasn't very, very much in, but obviously safety, um, very important. We'll, we'll talk about that. Obviously a cage is a good way of doing it because um, that's safe. They're behind, they're behind bars. Just make sure the leaves are away from the bars because if you're not careful, the leaves can kind of poke through the bars or somebody can touch the bars and um, get stung. Um, obviously if you have children, Maybe not such a good idea, or at least you have to be much more careful with pets. Be mindful of all those things. Someone was asking about growing gimpy gimpy in a, um, a terrarium, you know, a glass tank or something. You know, might have to be a bit big, but um, yeah, I would have thought you can do that. Somebody said they, they didn't like to do that because it just, the humidity got too high and the, the thing rotted. But I mean, I, I would have thought it's supposed to like reasonable amounts of humidity. So I would, you could, you could try that. So when you dispose of the leaves, don't put them in your compost because even when they're dry, they still have those spines that contain the moroidin, the, the protein that causes the pain. So um, incineration, so to burn them. We have an open fire, so I just um, you can put them on the open fire, or or they, sometimes they fall and sort of rot down on the compost. If they rot down, that's that's okay as well. Right. So where are we? Yes, exactly. So really, make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. If you're doing it to be sort of clever. Or sort of show off it's not a really good reason you'll get bored very quickly with them you have to have i think a genuine fascination for this plant or an interest in unusual plants and do it do it for the right reason and be very responsible in so far as safety safety goes you know there are people who on who their youtube videos of people deliberately stinging themselves that's pretty stupid i think it's pretty stupid um somebody was asking about whether you need ventilation masks and um things like that um, the thing is, if you disturb them, if you're strimming a whole patch of gimpy gimpy in the Queensland forest or something, in the rainforest, or you're really disturbing them, there's lots of air movement, that can happen. Little spines get off the leaf and they go into the air. You breathe them in and you can get kind of sneezing fits and things like that. But, you know, if they're just quietly in their cage, you're not doing anything like that, then it's no problem at all. I use this room for various things for hours on end. I've had zero problems with these gimpy gimpies. So, I mean, they will get bigger. They might get kind of, well, ultimately a few metres. But of course you can prune them. You know, you can prune them and incinerate the things you chop off. So you can keep, contain them as much as you wish. I haven't tried cuttings. I might try, I might actually try um, doing cuttings. But um, I certainly wouldn't use a, you know, any kind of mask or something. That would be, I wouldn't keep it if I had to do that. Because it's just, you know, you go into your front room and you have to wear a mask. It's a bit over the top, isn't it? Um... Yeah, so it, so so the Gimpy Gimpy has been sensationalised um, on the internet. You know, the story about somebody who wiped their bottom and 
with the leaf. They wouldn't have done it because they'd have picked it up and their hand would have got stung before they got to reach their bottom. So I think they are dangerous. They, 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 if you have extensive contact with them, it's horrible pain. I know someone who got stung and their lymph nodes sw um, swelled up and all kinds of things happened. But um, on the other hand, if you get lightly stung, lightly brush a leaf, you, you go through the treatment, it, it's okay. It will be unpleasant, but it will be okay. So, so I think um, there's a lot of sensationalism about, about these. Um, and of course, the media doesn't help, although the media has been very good um, to me as well. I'd like to say, actually, since we're on the subject of um, the media, um, yeah, I had an ITV, ITV, as well as the radio, I did an ITV interview. They were wonderful. ITV Meridian were wonderful. So um, I don't want to be, I don't want to feel like I'm having a go at reporters. It was just that particular thing about being me growing it because I was bored. I just thought, what? No. So a lot of wonderful reporters. Thank you, wonderful reporters. Um, so it's important ecologically in Australia. Um, Gimpy Gimpy is an Aboriginal name. I think it's a Gubby Gubby tribe. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's very important um, in culturally in the ethnobotany of the Aboriginal peoples. I think it's a cure for arthritis, actually. I was reading somewhere, whether that's reliable, I don't know. I'm not sure how it cures or treats arthritis. Maybe the pain you get from the gimpy gimpy is so bad you forget about the arthritis, I'm not sure. Um, ecologically important, there's a caterpillar, a moth, there's a beetle in, in, Queen, in um, the rainforest in Queensland that lives off the gimpy gimpy, and also a mammal. I can't remember the name, but there's a mammal that somehow eats it. I don't know how it gets away with that, whether it has special, you know, cast iron mouth or something. Yes, and also it's important in research. There's a lot of research on pain related to the gimpy gimpy. Anyway, so that's really a bit more background to put the whole whole story in context. You know, my mug was all over the papers. I want to have my say and put this whole thing into a little bit of um, more sensible, sensible context. OK, so I don't know who else is growing this in UK. I might be the only one. I don't know. But um, yes, you've heard it from the horse's mouth. So now everybody wants them to see... The media was fascinated. Where do I put my key? Oh, there it is. They're fascinated with the idea it is in a cage. I've got a padlock. That's a good idea. Have a padlock, you know, because, you know, just safety, safety. This is a parrot cage I bought off eBay, actually. We should have scary jaws music at some point, at this point, I suppose. Okay, so there we are. So I'm not going to go anywhere near that until I put on my, um, I've got these gauntlet um, heavy duty gloves. Get yourself some talcum powder as well, because you'll find if you put these on and you start sweating, you'll have trouble getting them off. OK, so whenever I go in, you don't go into that cage unless you've got even if you're watering them and you think, well, I won't touch them. You might. So safety first, safety first, as someone said. Um, oh, where's my kit? Where's my cleaning kit? There we are. OK, so here's the safety kit. I bought some hydrochloric acid. Um, 10 percent hydrochloric acid on the Internet. It's kind of frightening what you can buy on the Internet. I'm sorry, it is. You know, there are drain cleaners that people buy on the internet and, you know, there are stories of these acid attacks, which are just awful. You know, I think these, sh these things should be regulated. 10% is a slightly more dilute solution. You know, you can put that on your hand. It might sting a little bit, but it won't, it won't um, um, cause major burning. So I diluted that 10% hydrochloric acid down to 3%. And it's the 3%. What you do is if you get stung, don't rub it. Because if you rub it, you'll break the hairs and they'll go further into your skin. Put the three, spray the 3% solution of hydrochloric acid on it. Oh, it's got some gunge in there. I don't know where that's from. Anyway, never mind. Um, loo paper, and you can put some loo paper on or some tissue paper just to keep the solution there. Or put your, actually put your, wherever you're stung into it. Do that for half an hour. And depending on how, how um, much you've been stung, that might be quite painful. Um, yeah, and once you've done that, what do you do after you've done that? Yes, you do that for half an hour. And the, yeah, that's what I was going to say. The acid denatures the protein. You see, it's a protein that's causing the pain, the meroidin, and it, the acid denatures the protein. So then you get these wax strips, and some people might, some people don't like hair. Um, you know, these wax strips you use for removal of hair. You know, and they're quite, I, I've done it once. So people who use these for hair, you've got to do that because it's the hairs that are causing the pain. So you remove the, the hairs. And then obviously, maybe after that, wash your hands, put some moisturising cream on because it's quite harsh treatment of your hands or wherever you're stung and, and that, etc. So there you go. So you've got to have that first aid kit, I think, if you're going to really grow the gimpy gimpy responsibly. OK, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, try and turn around the camera if I can. 
is my technological expertise wrapped up. I think they will be, won't they? And then I'll show you the Gimpy Gimpy with my zoom. I'm not going to put my get anywhere near. Yeah, there is the Gimpy Gimpy. And you'll see they've they've grown a bit since their media. There are lots of on online. Um, you know, you wouldn't shouldn't really take this out of its cage. I did do that for one photographer. Perhaps I shouldn't have done. Um, you can do it safely with the gloves. But you really do have to be careful. And you'll notice, what you'll notice is, if I can zoom, you see those hairs on the leaf. You can see the hairs. It looks fluffy. It looks almost sweet. It's kind of like a fur. But it's those hairs that impart the um, painful sting. You'll notice they're also on the... Um, also on the stems and all, all over the plant, really. So there we are. There's Gimpy Gimpy. Yes, so great. At this point, I should be saying like this video or something like that. But um, I don't know about all that. So you do what you think right. But anyway, hopefully that's given... There we go. Hopefully that's given you a bit more background. And uh, you know a bit more about the Gimpy Gimpy, cultivation of Gimpy Gimpy. And um, who, who I actually am. Not a bored person. Okay. Bye-bye.